always wanted to come to Montana and go on a cattle drive. Something that I've always wanted to do. Because I come from London, I just look up and I think, I'm moving cattle in Montana. Here we go. Driving cattle at Dryhead Ranch in South Central Montana. It's remote country, a blank spot on the map. But it's just a couple of hours from the Billings Airport. People from all over the world find their way here to experience the real deal cowboy life. It's how you think of things when you watch Western movies, you know, and you kind of romanticize it, but it really is here. Like New Yorker Nan Cody, visiting Montana, pushing cattle horseback for the very first time. And to be able to enjoy it and make that dream come true, I'm, I'm just really blessed. Dryhead Ranch is a working cattle and horse ranch that runs about 1,000 cow-calf pairs and keeps about 150 horses on some 30,000 deeded acres on the vast Crow Indian Reservation. If you're looking for a swimming pool or tennis courts or even just trail riding, Dryhead Ranch probably isn't for you. But if you want to experience a real working cattle ranch, this is the place to saddle up. For nearly 40 years, Dryhead has welcomed a handful of weekly guests, no more than 10 at a time, to experience their way of life. Do whatever it takes to keep the ranch running. We get them up early in the morning and we sometimes keep them out late at night. And <laughs> that's just the way it is when you run cattle. It's incredible. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's more than I anticipated. This week before Memorial Day is one of four spring cattle drive weeks to Dryhead. And the day starts early with a hearty breakfast at six in a log cabin dining room that was once the homestead cabin of Jennifer's great grandmother. Located miles beyond the end of the pavement, Dryhead Ranch headquarters is in a beautiful canyon lined by rim rock walls. Indians ran buffalo off one of the cliffs here, known as a buffalo jump, a method they used for hunting the animals before they had horses. The many dry buffalo skulls found in the area, or dry heads, gave Dryhead Ranch its name. Every morning after breakfast, we pile into a couple of four-wheel drive Suburbans for the adventurous drive down the long, muddy, and rutted ranch road. Everybody on! To meet our horses and the cattle herd, we'll spend the day driving. Let's head out, guys. It may be late May, but overnight snow has it looking more like winter than spring. Did you get snow done? A little bit. Yeah. It's a kiss from Canada. <laughs> But we're all dressed for the weather, prepared for a wet and cold day in the saddle and a day of adventure, driving cattle. This is not a make-believe cattle drive. The ranch really does need to move these cows. The herd has just spent the winter on Dryhead's winter pasture land outside Lovell, Wyoming, just south of the Montana border. Come spring, it takes four separate week-long cattle drives to bring 1,000 cow-calf pairs up to their summer range. The animals will be driven out again in late November in what can be brutal winter weather. It'll be plenty western on this drive. Love this Phoenix weather. As we endure rain, cold, and even snow for much of the week with a howling wind as well. A little cold, a little rainy, but it's a beautiful day in Montana. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. But no one complains. After all, the weather just adds to the adventure of living the dream. It's brisk, isn't it? It is brisk. And it's wet. But we're getting there. A rainy, cold day on a horse beats any day at a desk. So this is a pretty cool graduation present, huh? Yeah, it is. Hope Brown is here with her dad, Carl, who gave his daughter a week at dry head as a high school graduation present. This is all about my daughter. She loves this kind of thing. Normally, if it was up to me, I probably wouldn't have done it. But now that I have, I'm glad I did. Living the dream. <laughs> Not bad for a person who sits behind a computer all day long. This is definitely out of my territory, but uh, I love it. My son suggested it. Another family from another generation is here as well. Dwayne Pickens and his son, Dwayne Jr., a Phoenix police officer better known as DJ. I just wanted to see what my dad did as a kid. Dwayne Sr. grew up horseback riding his granddad's ranch outside Malta, Montana, in the northeast corner of the state near the Canadian border. 
So this one's gonna put you back to being a kid again, huh? Yep, yep. You, you betcha. Yep. Dwayne just turned 80, still fit and going strong. And you still like horses. Oh, yeah. What do you think of the week so far? It's been excellent. A little bit chilly, but still, it's worth it. And the always smiling Kathy Forward is here from Canada. How you doing? I'm so good. Where she once had her own ranch. You just blend in and you can do as much or as little as you want. And it is wide open, beautiful, rustic country with absolutely great horses. Now when you whistle, are you calling them in or what? Oh, mainly just make them stop for a second. Just as interesting as the guests are the people you meet who live this life every day. Like Chris Hatch. Chris is a real deal working cowboy, but he gets plenty of help from his three very well-trained dogs. They're Border Collie Kelpie Crosses. Fun to watch them work. They never stop. And any maverick that steps out of line will soon get their attention. Jennifer's daughter, Kristen, is here with her dog. He's an Australian Shepherd. Yeah, he's only two. Who's just as busy as the other three canine cowboys. He's super tired when he gets home. He just flat, flat lays out. He's done for the day. Good. <laughs> Kristen left the ranch for a spell to check out life in the city, but the 23-year-old didn't stay away for long. I left for a little while and worked in town and just realized that, you know, I wanted to get back to horses and around the ranch and really, in, really enjoy being back. Preserving this way of life they love is what this cattle drive is all about. And why Dry had opened the ranch to guests in the early 1980s. His owner, Jay Kahn, told us under the porch during a rainstorm. You can't just ranch. You have to have more than that, especially if you're trying to grow and trying to make something for the future. It's not always easy making ends meet raising horses and cattle and paying guests provide a financial boost to the bottom line. And the visitors get a taste of an experience they can otherwise only dream about. It's a win-win deal. Like I say, it's not just a numbers and dollars deal. It's a it's something that we're trying to do because we want to keep doing what we're doing and have something for the next generation. The drive takes us through a mix of private and public land. It's gorgeous, unspoiled country. Amazing to be here in the middle of it. Oh, and then some. I, I just can't imagine ever describe, being able to describe the vastness of this country. And it just, it's untouched. I say this is the best part. Beginning riders are just as welcome here as experts. And with 150 horses and no more than 10 guests at a time, the ranch has a well-trained horse that'll fit any rider. How are you doing? Good. Keith Lyson and his wife Linda own their own horses back home in Washington State, where they do a lot of trail riding. But being horseback at Dryhead is way different. But just the whole thing is just uh, totally different from what we're used to. Well, it's just using different uh, skills, and it's also fun to ride different horses, you know. Recommend it? Absolutely. So is that one you're training? Yeah. Working cowboys on a drive like this will use the opportunity to train young horses. And it's always interesting to watch these pros at work. This is a new experience. <laughs> How's he doing? Not too bad. Can't complain, I guess. He hasn't bucked me off yet. Cold it was. Every day we'd drive the cows 10 or 15 miles to a designated pasture where we'd leave them for the night and then ride back to a corral where we'd leave the horses. While much of the week was wet and cold, no one complained. But it sure was nice to see Jen waiting for us at Trails Inn with some nice hot chicken soup. The best. Which we enjoyed inside a horse trailer to get out of the rain. Nice service at the end of the day. That's <laughs> perfect. A long day in the saddle makes for an early bedtime, and a nice warm bed in a cozy cabin sure felt good. And late in the week, we woke up to a very nice treat. Sunshine. It's the last day of the cattle drive. You can 
finally tie our slickers out of the saddle instead of wearing them. It's a gorgeous day. No rain. That's a good little break in the weather, huh? Yeah, yeah, you're not kidding. It's gonna be a day God gave us, you know? Chris's two young sons joined us for part of the drive. Always fun to hang out with ranch kids. Growing up horseback with a rope in their hand, pushing cows with dad. I came out as a guest. In and Terry Conley is proof you don't have to be born into the ranch life to be a cowboy. The retired Ohio firefighter first came to Dry Head as a guest back in 1992. Today, he works for the outfit. I retired from working 24 on and 48 off. Now I just work seven days a week. <laughs> Terry was on the drive a few years earlier when Jake's daughter Cassidy rode with us at the age of three. A fearless cowgirl in her spurs, Jake had to tell her to slow down a time or two. It was great fun to have her along. This year, she had to go to school, but she was there to greet Dad when he got home. My favorite part is my kids get to be with me at all times. You know, all the time. I mean, unless moms teach them school. Someday Cassidy will be riding her with her kids. At least that's the hope. We hope. <laughs> we hope. We love this country and, and we love this lifestyle. And the guests who sign up to experience this authentic slice of the American West. How's your day? 20 out of 10. The most beautiful day. It's fantastic. Are critical to keeping the dream alive at Dry Head. I think it's an, an amazing experience for anyone, and it's a huge piece of heritage. and. An honor to be here.